Yo, what's going on E7 fam? Pat here, back with another video, and this one's kind of important, because today I want to talk about some of the recent concerns that have been expressed to me about the game, through my community, my friends, fellow content creation people in the space, right? I want to talk about the things they've expressed to me, and some of their fears, and why I think they're not entirely misplaced. We might actually potentially have a problem here on our hands. And in case you're wondering what I'm talking about, well, Epic 7's revenue is down for the month of January 2024 for the global server. And not just like a little bit down, it's down by quite a bit. Probably the worst month that the game has ever had that I can remember. Previously, the game's revenue has held pretty steady through a lot of times throughout the game. Like you've heard obviously before, game's dying, game's not doing well. A lot of doomsaying, right? A lot of naysayers, a lot of people being very pessimistic. But the game has always kept humming along, and when the financials come out at the end of the month, lo and behold, Epic 7, right there, always where it has been, right? It's always been consistent. But right now, though, spending is down, which has, again, got people a bit concerned. And I feel like it's starting to affect the morale within the community. And it's not just, you know, people talking to me about it, or even myself feeling a bit concerned. Again, other content creators are expressing this as well. I'll show you some clips from people like Genizod and Kana a little bit later in the video, so that, that way you can get their thoughts on the subject, and I'll weigh in on what they have to say. But as you can guess by the title of the video, that's not the only thing I want to talk about in this video. I want to talk about one of the positives that's happening at the same time during this whole situation, and why I'm optimistic and hopeful that Epic 7's best days may still be ahead of us. So let's jump into what caused this. We're going to jump over here to the sensor tower report. In case you don't know what this is, this is essentially a chart that releases at the end of the month or the first of every month that basically shows you how much money gotcha games are bringing in month over month. Obviously, the games that are bringing in the most amount of money are going to be, you know, able to pay their dev team to keep making more content. It's a profitable game. You can expect the game to keep going and providing for its players. So Genshin Impact, Nikkei, FGO, Honkai, Uma Musume. These are pretty much always the top five, over $20 million each per month. And when you scroll down here at the bottom, you can see these are the games that aren't doing super great. And game development is pretty expensive and time-consuming. So if they're not making at least their money back, if it's not profitable, well, these are the games that are potentially on the chopping block. Normally... Epic 7 appears in this 3 to $5 million range. If you remember from the Luna video from last week, we talked about how Luna, uh, Luna's release window made over $5 million, which was more than the $5 million that the Guilty Gear collab made. And pretty much every month, for as long as I can remember on the global server, 3 to $5 million has been how much Epic 7 brings in every month. It might go like way up to like 7 or $8 million during like a really hype collab or something. But for the most part, in a standard month, three to five million dollars in spending is pretty much what it has always remained. That's what it's always going to end up being. And if you look here at the month of January, you can see Epic Seven is at one point eight million dollars, which is again a pretty big cut. It's definitely the lowest that I can ever remember seeing. The only other point in time that I could think of where morale is really low on the game was the release of Seaside Bologna and how for literally like half a year, nothing felt like it changed in the game. There wasn't really any content coming out and the game was incredibly stale. But I don't have the numbers for back then during that time. But other than that, this is again, like I said, the lowest point that I have seen the revenue, at least for the global server. And again, it has caused some, uh, some people to feel very concerned. Now, I know what some of you are thinking. Well, it's fine if global server is down on revenue because, well, we just got the CN server. They invested a lot into the CM server. We have the CN whales, right? Well, here is the Reddit post. This is the only record that I can find for how much money Epic 7 made for the CN server last year, which is 382 million yuan. I believe that is the currency. If you look at the chart here, which is from Green Space Billy Billy. You can see here June. This is the bar for when it released. The game released in June of 2023. 
July of 2023, you remember we had the Lethe event, one of the biggest pay-to-win events we've ever had, probably the biggest pay-to-win event. So, of course, they're going to make big bucks there off Wales. August saw the release of Navy Captain Landy, of course, one of the best units ever made. Of course, we're going to spend there. And then you have September, where we released Nikwal, the character that was there to celebrate the success of the CN server. But then you look at October, November, December, and you realize, well, hey, straight up, it's uh, not as good. The money is just really not there. It's not as prominent as it was. Now, if we convert all this to USD, right, you can see how much money they made every single month. June, almost 14 million. July, almost 14 and a half million. August, nine and a half. Almost 8 million in September. But then October, November, and December is less than the 3 million average that Global Server has every single month. And the projection here, if this is a chart is to be believed, is that January they made 1.6 million USD, which is again lower than what we are having right now, which is probably the biggest drop off that Global has ever had. So again, people are starting to feel very worried and starting to think that maybe we have a problem because again, like I said in the past, if people have concerns about the game, like maybe they feel like it's dying, the revenue always proved them wrong. This is the first time that a lot of us can remember that the revenue hasn't really proven some of the more negative uh, voices in the community wrong. So I want to play for you guys now a clip from Genizod, who obviously one of the biggest creators in the space. And the thing I always respect about Genizod is that he is always brutally honest and he is incredibly transparent with his audience, right? He tells it like it is. So I'm just going to let him do the talking here in this clip from his video, Is Epic 7 All Right? 2023 in Review. I'll link that whole video down in this video's description if you want to watch it. So again, I'm just going to let Jenna talk and then I'll weigh in afterwards. Play any 7 all day, every day when uh, Small Gate is just dead silent and nothing's happening? That's boring. And I think a lot of other people feel the same way. I'm not the only one. Like, sure, I play the game for a living all the time, but I'm sure a lot of people are feeling the same way where they're like, oh, why am I playing E7 all day? I should just go play Tekken. And that game just came out. Or like, oh, I'll just go play Power World. I'll play that instead, right? That sounds fun right now. So, yeah, all in all, I just kind of wanted to, I suppose, vent about some of this, but also just talk about, like, kind of a worrying trend. Um, and it, not really a huge fan. I really hope that Smallgate can finally get it together because uh, I don't want to see this game die. I don't want to see the community die either because community is at the all-time lowest it's been in a long time and it's yeah so that's jenna at the end basically dropping the mic at the end of his video as you can see from what's on the screen here he is also talking about the difference between december 2023 at 3 million that is what we've come to expect that's the low end of what people are like yeah that's the acceptable range to let you know that epic 7 is stable and you can see here again, January 2024, 1.8 million, right? That is the lower end. And he's just worried because, you know, this is a game that he, like myself, really, really loves. And he's seeing it, you know, throughout the video, he talks about it. He is seeing from talking to other people in his community, other peers in the space, that there is a growing concern that maybe, you know, if Smallgate needs to get it together, like we have to do something. But what can we do? Like what, what's, what's going on? There's no transparency, right? And that's something you'll hear echoed through the next video, which is uh, Kana's video talking about the very same scenario. What is happening to Epic 7 in 2024? So again, I'll just let you listen to what Kana has to say regarding the issue, right? And then I'll weigh in a little bit after. But the issue why this is concerning, especially for Epic 7, is because Epic 7 has never had a month where they've dipped below 3 million. I think recently, recently. They've spent a lot of time above 3 million or at 3 million, but below 3 million specifically just for global. And again, this has nothing to do with China revenue. I'm not talking about China revenue. I don't know where to get that information. Like we already reliably. talked about the CN but revenue. For just global Epic 7, I want to kind of talk about what this means and why I'm a little bit concerned for Epic 7. And that's to be completely honest with you guys, I have no idea what's going on with Epic 7. We are, we are literally sitting at, or we're basically sitting in a period where like we are waiting for new updates and like sometimes mm -hmm. they get announced, sometimes they don't. Uh, granted, we did get like basically the Meruin mail, which has more stuff. And so that should bolster numbers a little bit. So I'm not like, you know, I'm not in like end of service kind of, of like fear right now, but no collabs. 
Um, that is a like, sentiment I hear from you. Their all, communication so. with us somehow makes even less sense at times uh, than before, which is crazy because they got to like the stagnation, I think, because their communication was really weird. Um, we have back to back limited, it feels like literally every single month of the year, which also just doesn't make sense. And I'm uh, like, how, how, how am I supposed to even recommend or make content for to, you know, recommend anything from anyone when every single banner that comes out has a second, like, like a, has like a second accompanying banner that has limiteds in it. So you can hear his like frustration, like how he doesn't know what's going on. And he's not really sure how he's supposed to recommend content because, well, again, what's going on? Like, all we have to go off of is lack of transparency, nothing coming out of Smilegate. All we can see is the numbers, and the numbers suggest that there is a crack in the armor. Hence why I was saying that there is a uh, potential problem here. And if you don't think there's a problem, well, then allow me to show you this. Right? This is what I wanted to get to. This is probably what some of you have probably been waiting to hear about since you saw the title of the video. This is a job posting posted by Super Creative, the development team behind Epic 7. I actually came across this job posting from Lightstream because Light was discussing it on his stream because, well, it was kind of just stealthily snuck out there into the wild. Now, as somebody who works in the recruiting space, I can say that usually people try to find or source things in private and it's only when they are somewhat desperate that they kind of go this route or they just don't know what to do about it. Like, cause this essentially overexposes the job. I'm looking perhaps too much into this, but again, this is usually my livelihood. This is what I do. So if you're resorting to a public posting, it's either, cause again, you haven't reached out to hire with a firm that does things privately or you are just that desperate to get somebody, right? So here is Epic 7 Battle Planner. As you can see here, it is essentially for Epic 7 in case there's any doubt as to what this job posting is for. And the main thing that they're looking for is a character slash hero designer as well as somebody who is responsible for balance. And then character hero data operations, most likely the match history website. Right, so for everybody who was worried about the fact that there's no transparency, well, here it is. Here is your transparency. They're looking to try to make changes to the balance team, right? So there's two ways that you can look at this. Number one, the current balance team that they have is not good and they're looking to replace it. Or number two, they are looking to bolster their existing balance team because currently... They must recognize that based on feedback that they're getting, that it's not exactly good enough. So it's one of those two camps, right? Either we got rid of the old team, we need a new team, or our new team isn't strong enough, we need to make that team better. Now, again, if you are somebody who is saying there aren't problems, this is pretty much as clear as it can be. If they are recruiting to help fix perceived issues in the game... And there must be some kind of issue. But the silver lining, the positive from this whole situation that I wanted to talk about in the beginning, is that this thing existing means that Smilegate is listening. And that they're looking to make some changes. Because clearly the status quo is not cutting it. And so you can take solace in knowing that change is hopefully coming from this thing. Because that's how I interpret it, right? It means that they're trying to right the ship, as I always say they do. The Smilegate is always trying to right the ship. They have never given me a reason to 100% truly doubt them, right? So seeing this, like, it makes me really happy because it means I know that we're making moves. But while I'm here talking about this whole thing, about potential perceived problems in the game, Smilegate is taking initiatives to fix things for once. And people are rightfully concerned. So now is the time if they're making moves to make changes and you have concerns. I think this is the time for as a community us to be more open, more honest about the game that we play, about things that we want to see fixed. Like, let's be honest, right? Just fixing the balance, the perceived game balance, right? Hiring a game balancer 
that's not going to make every single problem go away. It'll get us back to the status quo for sure. But I think I speak for a lot of people when I say the gear grind is really hard in this game right now. It takes far too long to be able to play the characters that you want to play. It's why I do the how to play series in the first place, right? I have seen so many people come and go from my community just feeling that they can't get started. It's difficult to get into the game because of all of the RNG baked into the game's gearing system. I hear constantly that the new UI is not particularly good. I hear that we're missing meaningful content. Things like PvE is a little bit lacking. Sure, as I'm recording this now today, new Ancient Inheritance is out. And so far from what I've played, it's great. I think the devs did a pretty good job. There's a couple of things that are a little bit amiss, and we'll see in the coming weeks how things develop out. If it's, you know, a boom or a bust. But for the most part, it seems like it's a pretty good improvement. And the other thing I always hear about is, and it's something I've championed in a lot of my videos, Moonlight 5-star acquisition rate is pretty terrible, right? Especially the current Mystic system. It's just too difficult to get characters. So most people feel like between the gear grind and that, that they'll never be able to enter World Arena and they'll never be able to play the most hyped up feature of the game. And I think that's something that we honestly should be talking about more openly and honestly in hopes to probably get those things changed. I mean, there's other things that we could talk about, how monetization is not really quite there. Uh, it could definitely use another look at, right? Uh, and that's probably one of the reasons why we're having some issues with generating revenue, right? But again, at the end of the day, what I take away from this here, right? This job posting is, again, change is coming. How long it'll take? Uh, well, who knows? Because you could place a job in a week. It could take six months. And I'm hoping that it is earlier rather than later. And I'm hoping that, like I said, if we as a community are more open and honest and, you know, pushing for change because clearly they're trying to make change, then maybe we can make it happen. If the entire community can rally together to cancel an atrocious system like Awaken Potential, then maybe we can rally together and actually push for change when clearly the company making the game is trying to make changes. So that's it. What are your thoughts? Let me know down in the comments below. And any other commentators out there, I welcome you. I invite you to have this discussion with me. Just be more transparent, open, and honest about where we're at in the state of the game. Thanks for watching. I'll be streaming later on tonight on twitch.tv forward slash I am underscore TSU. You'll also be able to see me here live on YouTube under the live tab. I'll be streaming Epic 7, obviously, tonight. I'll be doing it tomorrow and Wednesday as well. You'll probably also see some Honkai Star Rail and Persona 3 Reload on the channel. Hope to see you there. Have a wonderful day. Catch you in the next one. Bye-bye now.